Hey y'all, so I'm trying to 3D print my own electric ducted fans, and if you've been following my previous videos, you'll know that I've gone from this very primitive design to something that's basically just a copy of off-the-shelf EDFs. I probably should have stopped trying to do my own thing a while ago, but anyways, I built this lever that helps me test fan thrust, and through a series of basic tests and a shit ton of filament, I've gone from barely pushing 40 grams of thrust to breaking the 400 gram number for the same 70 millimeter diameter. In this video, I test everything from thrust tubes, inlet lips, motor struts, fan profiles, and the results are pretty clear. I'll summarize them at the end of the video. If you haven't already, check out the previous video before watching. That's where I go over more of my manufacturing and design philosophy. Um, this one, I'm actually testing the parts that I made. So with my last propeller, I was just getting this crazy turbulent airflow, which caused a bunch of noise throughout the entire testing rig. And so my goal for the next propeller iteration was to make something a lot more thin. Here's a more muted seven bladed design where I use the printing in half method, which is something I go into depth in, in my last video. I also oversized the prop and then ran it inside the duct to get a really small fan gap, which is also another standard procedure for me at this point. The tests were decent at around 60 grams at 30% throttle, but it was around this time when I noticed how unstable my testing rig really was. You can hear and see the vibrations as it slides around during operation. Adding these weights plus this inlet lip up to performance significantly and then adding this converging nozzle ended up achieving a record of 90 grams. But before I continued testing the fan, I knew I had to improve my testing setup in order to reduce the vibrations that were going on. So I took a very simple approach. I just reprinted a bunch of the lever parts and bolted it into this very heavy particle board. I also decided to not be lazy and screw in the EDF to the arm, just like it was designed for. And overall, this helped me get a much smoother testing process and the fan ended up hitting 122 grams at the same throttle. So obviously getting this thrust lever in better shape was critical. So back to the fan stuff, I broke the inlet section of my old ducts and used this as an opportunity to improve the motor mount configuration based on some really helpful feedback I got on my last video. My new design has five much thinner motor mounts, which I filleted for a smoother interaction with the flow. Compared to my previous two designs, I was actually able to cut 12% of the motor mount area overall, and even though I can't confirm this without things like flow visualizers or wind tunnel, the higher amount of thinner obstructions should be producing um, smoother airflow on top of the reduced area that it provides. I ended up seeing significant improvement with this duct. Here's the clip again of hitting 122 grams with the Rev1 duct, and I was able to get 20 grams more on the same lip setup with this new one. So it was time to move on to some nozzle and intake testing now that I felt a lot better about the duct itself because of both the oversizing method and the new motor mount configuration. Here's the base duct hitting around 115 grams. Adding a converging nozzle bumped this up to 119. Adding the lip from before hit 142 and adding an even bigger lip hit a record 152 grams. And so I had a hard time focusing and I wanted to rework the propeller I was running. While I think the printing of the propeller in two pieces method had its place, I wanted to go back to printing everything in one go. I also got some comments telling me to increase the pitch angle of my blades, and so I designed a propeller with a lot more pitch. The added benefit of this is that it starts on the bed and doesn't need supports to print. I took a lot of inspiration of the more traditional propellers you see in modern OEM EDFs. This one has 11 thin, wider blades with a lot cooler curves. I did a minimal amount of sanding on my first iteration to save off some of the printing impurities. I designed this propeller to screw right into the motor, which is leagues better than relying on a friction fit. Again, I oversized these and I ran them tied to duct, ending with less than half a millimeter of gap all around. And the test came out great. Running a naked duct with this new propeller already tied my record at 152 grams. Adding the larger inlet lip broke 165. Adding a converging nozzle bumped it up to the 190s and then adding a longer nozzle broke 200. I then sent it all the way up to 100% throttle just because I was curious. Also, most EDFs just published their 100% power output anyway, and I ended up recording a max thrust of over 365 grams at 100% throttle. So my last round of modifications includes printing a unibody duct and lip. Before, when I was putting the inlets on and off the ducts, I had some sharp corners as a result of the design and hopefully printing everything in one go eliminates some of the losses caused by those sharp corners. I used a big inlet sizing because it consistently showed better results in the test. I also downsized the motor mounts just a bit, like a few tenths of a mil each. So hopefully there's a marginal decrease in flow blocking area and thus a little gain in performance there. 
And then seriously, what sanded my propeller down? I don't expect to get rid of the layer lines. Um, I did some research and it's really hard to post-process PLA in particular. There have been tons of comments about using resin or even something like EBS, and I'm pretty open to it. Um, it's just for now, this is what I have on hand. But after some decent wet sanding, I got the propeller in a little better shape than it was, at least before. And then lastly, I printed this nose cone, again, with the whole idea of eliminating perpendicular surfaces as the air is pulled into the ducts. And this is my final test run for this video. At max throttle, I hit over 400 grams. So here are some general conclusions I made from all this testing. Number one, inlet lips are critical. Everything got better with an inlet lip, and so far, the bigger the lip, the better it performed. Also, printing them on the duct itself was definitely the way to go. Number two, thrust tubes are probably important. There's been some discussion on some previous videos, but also just generally overall about the aerodynamics of thrust tubes, and it's hard to kind of find a lot of information on this. In my video, again, I tested a 90% reduction that was a length of around the diameter of the fan, so 70 mil. I haven't tried a diverging nozzle yet. Everything has been converging. My guess is that any sort of exhaust extension, whether it be a converging or diverging nozzle, or even just a straight tube, might increase performance. I feel like a huge advantage is just straightening the swirling flow that's coming out of the back. However, this topic is currently way above my pay grade, and this is a topic that I'd love to hear more information from you guys on. Number three, the oversampling method has proven to be super useful. Most OEM EDFs advertise about a one mil fan gap, and with the oversizing method, I'm able to get significantly less than that. Number four, copying the high pitch, the high blade count, and the complex curves on current off-the-shelf EDFs has produced my best fan. And there is an infinite amount of tuning potential with these things. Again, pitch, blade count, curves, but I just don't have the resources to test all that yet. Anyways, I want to be careful with drawing any more concrete conclusions because, for one, I haven't had time to print a bunch of parts for this. I'm thinking especially with the whole diverging nozzle thing. And number two, there's bound to be some weird coupling effects between these areas of the EDF. So it's not just a matter of designing different size exhaust tubes or lips. To really unlock the potential of the EDF, you'd have to test all these combos together. And again, I haven't had the time or resources to do that yet. With that said, I'm a lot more confident in the design and I hope to use it on some actual vehicles. I might just buy an OEM EDF, we'll see. Uh, but I have 10 x my thrust output and I'm pretty encouraged by that. So thank you guys for following along. And again, I'd love to hear any thoughts about any part of this design. This has really been a group effort from, from everyone watching and commenting.